Hello everyone and I'm sorry about the late start of this show. We've uh, been having problems all uh, afternoon I think with um, the number of people here which is wonderful and some crashes so I am going to give the very briefest of introductions and then we'll get on to the show. We're joined today for the first of our Meet the Linden talks by Brett Linden and Tolly Linden and to give a little bit of background Yay. to both of them. Brett is the digital content manager for Linden Lab where he assists with multiple marketing initiatives and you probably know him best as the person who oversees the Second Life Destination Guide. He's a website editor, he's a content strategist and a former print and online journalist whose writings have appeared in Billboard, Rolling Stone, Vibe, Hollywood Reporter and other publications. He's previously held managing pos editor positions at Amazon.com and Real Networks and in addition to his work in the tech center, sector, he teaches digital content creation and promotion at a major US university. Now, Tolly Linden is very well known to us all, I think. He discovered Second Life in 2004 and has been here ever since. Tolly loves to amplify the awesome by enlightening our residents about the newest features Linden Lab is working on and sharing the best places and creations in Second Life. Tolly is usually a female avatar, but it's always watermelon. So welcome both of you, and I'm joined here as my co-host by Jessica Lyon, who many of you will know as the person behind the team behind Firestorm. Yay, I'm nobody really special. <laughs> so, um, when Jess is kind of the the go-to person for Firestorm, except when she hides. <laughs> except when I'm hiding, which is most of the time. <laughs> so, I've given you both brief introductions, Brett and um, Tolly, but one of the purposes of these talks here is to give you a chance to talk to residents about um, what your work is like, what being at Linden Lab is like for you, what excites you about Second Life. And I'd like to start off by asking both of you how you came to work at Linden Lab. And maybe we'll kick off with Tolly because you've been there longer, I think. All right, sure thing. So, wow, how to summarize that. I was in a really hard place in my first life and I discovered Second Life through various sources like New World Notes. And I was reading a lot of cyberpunk and transhumanist literature at the time, thinking about a brighter future for my whole life. And I soon found myself, well, there's no nicer way to put it than I was utterly obsessed with being here every day. And my mom would be like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm in Second Life. So. After several months of this, I had a dream and I basically sent this crazy rambling note card to Shara Linden at the time and she, Robin, Philip and Daniel Linden, those are some OG names if you remember those, uh, yeah, at the time they gave me an opportunity to apply. So I went through that, I guess it turned out okay and yeah, leading up to the present, I am so very grateful, so very thankful to be here. Right. And Brett, how about you? Well, since I had a background in journalism, I first heard about Second Life during sort of the quote unquote hype era. Mm -hmm. And you might remember a lot of businesses sort of jumped, corporates, corporations jumped in, and Reuters, which is a journalistic outlet, um, had a bureau in Second Life. And I thought it was really crazy, you know, just, just so random and strange that uh, a legitimate, you know, organization would be in a virtual world. And so, and I'd actually played around with other virtual. Uh, spaces prior, like remember if worlds.net or worlds.com back in the day and others. Um, so I've been an enthusiast for a long, long time. So when Reuters jumped in, I had to check it out. That was my very, very first taste of Second Life. And when I was there, I met a lot of people and had um, some very deep and interesting conversations about world events. And it just it was a whole different type of experience than I expected at a much deeper level. And uh, the thing that sort of uh, 
locked it down for me was at the end of that conversation, like, you know, about two or three hour text chat and pre-voice, um, somebody gave me a hug, which was just such a strange thing to get hugged in a virtual world. It was just a nice, you know, parting, basically. And that just clinched it for me emotionally. I thought, oh, my gosh, this is really something else. You can connect with people and actually form really deep relationships. And that's what did it for me. And I've never looked back since. That's fantastic. So I, I find it interesting that your first time experiences in a cell is very much like uh, most people, I think, especially early, early adopters like us. The, there's something that's defined as um, snapping into presence, uh, which is kind of a very fast association of yourself with your avatar. And someone put it to me the other day which I thought was really cool, was that when you're talking to uh, friends that you know in Second Life, even if you're talking to them in real life, you'll say things like, oh, that was the time we went water skiing. And you won't actually say, that was the time our avatars went water skiing. You say, that was the time we went water skiing. Uh, and it's a kind of total association with your avatar. That's a great way to put it. I've heard it referred to different ways, but like the shared experience, a collective dream of conscious. Yeah, all those things over time has been so lovely. So when you first came in, Brett, you had that really positive experience and, and Tully, you kind of were very committed to it right from the word go. What did you, have you sort of become full residents? Do you have homes and places that you see as special to you in Second Life? And I'm not asking for addresses, otherwise, you know, everyone will go over and, and try and sit on your sofa. Uh, apparently Joe is, though. She wants your address, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joe's, Joe Yardley's crept up behind us and is asking for addresses. Uh, Toilet, I don't know if you want to go first, but I definitely have a response. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Brett. It's cool. Well, I was going to say, like, I, as you can imagine, I do spend, I mean, not just with the destination guy, which I'm sure we'll talk about, but mm -hmm. outside of my Linden quote unquote identity, I have um, several alts, many of which are long, long time residents and established. And yeah, I do have a place. Um, and I uh, love, for example, the music community and going to live performances. Um, and uh, I love the museums and the arts. Um, I love what's happening with the uh, LEA, the Linden Endowment for the Arts, and uh, not only professionally as a Linden, you know, putting that in the DG, but also just checking them out and being blown away by what is constantly being refreshed on those sims and even outside those sims across the, all of the grid. So, yeah. I guess that's a perk of your job is you, you kind of know what's going on better than anybody. So, like, in your off time, you know exactly where to go. You're like the go-to person for what's happening. There's a lot. It's really tough to keep up with all the stuff that's going on. There's so much, no matter what you're into, as everybody knows, of course. How much do you, how many entries of the destination guide do you get on a, in an average week? Would you say? It's a combination of user-submitted stuff um, and then also curated stuff, obviously monitoring the blogs and the mm. various um, feeds that are out there as well. Um, but prob from a user submission point of view, we probably get about three dozen a week. Um, but then we supplement, and that's those, most of those go live, and then we supplement those with others. One interesting little tidbit I find um, curious is that Sometimes some of the most amazing things that are happening in Second Life that are so worthy of self-promotion, uh, for whatever reason, people don't think, the creators, I guess, don't think to promote them and or put them in the DG. So without a doubt, please let us know. I mean, I try my best to monitor things, but, um, you know, by what's going on on the various social media feeds and in-world and so forth. But um, I definitely have to dig beyond what the users submit to find some of the entries. But yeah, there's lots of great stuff. That actually jumps into one of my questions. Can I just throw that in now quick? Go, go for it. Um, so we get, uh, on the Firestorm Viewer, I get in my inbox a lot, and uh, so do our support people asking, people asking, because we display the destination guide in our splash screen as well. 
and people are always asking, um, you know, can you put us in, put my event in the destination guide, and I have to reply and give them the link. And the reason they're asking is because it isn't actually obvious where to go um, to apply to have your event or your, your place listed in the destination guide. Um, would Linen Lab consider adding a little link somewhere in the destinations guide, you know, apply here or something more obvious, something where it, it makes more sense to people? Because people don't, um, they're generally not informed, I think, that they don't know where to look for that kind of information. Um, I think it would be really helpful if you had some kind of a link that takes them right there. Yeah, I, well, I think we could do a better job of surfacing it, but um, editor at lindenlab.com is the email, and mm -hmm. also there is a web-based form um, that's on the web implementation of the destination guide. You wouldn't see the link if you're in the in the viewer, of course, but if you go to secondlife.com slash destinations on the left-hand category navigation, there's actually a suggest link right there. It takes you right to a form that can be filled out. You see, out. a lot of people don't know that, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I th I'd love to see it. I mean, I'll, I'll take that back to the web dev mm -hmm. team, but... Uh, but they can also, anyone can just to an editor at, and uh, we'll take a look at it. It'd be cute if there's a kind of like button so that, you know, you could say you like a destination and somewhere that's oh, that'd be cool. granted. Although that would, that would be, that would probably be that game. Would probably be game People would cheat. To yeah. abuse, yes. But anyway, Tully, what about you? Do you okay. have a... So, yeah, the first day I was ever in Second Life, it was sort of like arriving at the most amazing of airports, you know, where people are from all over in this diversity of avatars. Mm -hmm. And I've mostly been a nomad sort of explorer. I have had homes in, I have had well, full regions, I still do, in fact. But I think the, the prime thing that always drives me is really this force of discovery and to share those discoveries and I really get curious and I love asking people where did you get your avatar or did you make these parts of your avatar or comment on a cool build they're making and finding the connections I love introducing wonderful creative minds in Second Life to each other and we've had so many over time so I would say that 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 keeps me going and it's really a positive feedback loop because when I hear from one person, one resident, that I'm reminded of another resident and I want to introduce them to each other. And as some of you may know, I'm frequently on some of the social media channels. Well, mainly Plurk, but I, I really, really like to ask, what's hot in Second Life right now? What do you enjoy exploring? And like Brett touched on, sometimes some of the most creative people in here, they are very shy and very modest about their work. They don't see all the awesomeness in it. And sometimes their friends kind of have to drag them closer to the spotlight, even though they don't want that attention necessarily. But we still like to shine a light and say that, wow, you know, once they have that admiration and recognition, they can see that their creative work makes a very real and very vibrant uh, and affects other residents when they come and explore or they take pictures and they post it on their blog and more word gets out. So I am always looking for those sorts of under undermined, underrated sort of gems that are out of the way of Second Life. I randomly teleport. I got this recent cool backpack to do that, <laughs> this, this neat device. But at all these sorts of things, it's sort of this interplay, this dynamic between the chaos and the order. And that's the stuff I really love, the serendipity the things that you don't expect to find, but when you look back, it may sort of relate to a sort of grouping of, for example, a collection of futuristic cyberpunk looking, there's, there's that word again. But I mean, I'm always, always about, I'm not locked to any single genre. And I'm always driven to listen to people's stories. Just like in an airport, someone may catch your attention, you start a conversation as a stranger and they may end up telling you the most fascina fascinating, fascinating tales. So, yeah, as for me, that's that relentless urge to, to discover and explore. So speaking of exploring, you do um, a lot of videos and mm -hmm. uh, you do a lot of really cool photography. Maybe you can share your, well, you. your Flickr page in here because I bet you a lot of people here don't know oh, that yeah. you have a Flickr. Let me um, the address one moment. And, uh, and in fact, your response there leads into another question that I had set up. <laughs> and I'll wait until you finish typing that because <laughs> it, it's, see, Seth, I didn't even have Segways. to, you know. Transitions, like, love that. It's like you like guys already DJ. knew what I was going to ask you and you don't actually even know. Okay, so, Torley, you are famous for mm -hmm. your SL Viewer tutorial videos. 
and um, as you know, I've done a few of those myself with the Firestorm Viewer. Uh, what you may not know is that uh, you've been my inspiration. Oh, fangirl, here we go. Um, <laughs> Positive um, inspiration loop. Yes. <laughs> Most of your uh, videos cover features um, kind of as you guys roll them out, uh, tutorials and informational videos. Um, but there are often many existing features and functionality in the viewer folks don't know about. Many of my tooltip videos are based on your your old tips and tricks videos that cover little known features um, so cool. in the viewer and they're very popular but I haven't seen many of those from you recently um, so the question is are we at an end to an era of of Torley's sort of tips and tricks or maybe there's some more coming in the future ah uh, so what the focus has shifted to in more recent times has been instead of these Easter eggs and I still do love them and the undocumented debug features and the weird little things. I, I love those and I have yeah, people love enjoyed those. Yeah. your videos, Jessica. Yeah, it's, it's mainly though, what I've primarily been assigned to have been more about new newer features that we've been promoting. And it's difficult because I do like to take the time to share even like bite-sized bits of stuff. And of course, when you or other residents make these quick tips and I, I really, really love sharing those sorts of things that when you know it, it saves you a lot of cumulative time in the long run. Mm -hmm. So it's mainly been a factor, I think, of my work responsibility and where I've been most needed at Linden Lab. And so in recent times, of course, that includes not just Second Life, but Blocks World and Project Sansar as well. So my time is, I mean, this might segue into another question later. It's more limited just focusing on those sorts of things. So when I'm working in Second Life, it's sort of like, well, what are the most important things I can contribute? And so on a broad level, we do want to really, really get the word out about new features like Project Bento recently. Like that's a huge one. I could go on and on about how. Oh, I'm I can't really, wait to see yeah, that. I'm looking so forward excited to for that. Yeah. And you may have seen my recent video on that. And there were a couple more others. But so it's, yeah, it's, I still love to make videos. It's just been that sort of sh change in focus. And I've done, maybe some of you have seen the, the promotional more like, um, what is it? Not so much feature explanations as trailer reels for Blocks World as well. And so I wish I could clone myself <laughs> as an airy one oh, with that. And <laughs> yeah, and it's just been, been sort of a gradual thing. And I think the, the cool thing too is that after sharing a lot of that, I think some residents have really done great with their blogs in terms of, of sharing both stuff within the viewer and stuff within Firestorm viewer, of course, which I can't address from an official perspective. So I'm glad we're having, we're talking about this, Jessica. <laughs> and, yeah. and all those, those little things I have learned from your videos. So I know how many residents turn to those and enjoy those as well. So I also I'm, know how I'm difficult so glad, it yes. is. It's, yeah. it's, it is a lot more work than I think people realize to, to pump out one of those little videos. Um, yeah. It's difficult. And and before, because I have some questions for Brett too, but I just want to ask totally one more question. Sure, sure, um, please do. Really quickly. Uh, and it's in the same sort of realm. Uh, the Community Gateway Program. Uh, many residents are still not aware that this project is actually in play, even perhaps because it's not still officially been announced. Um, recently, I just did, uh, I had to do a sort of a rush job for a, a video promoting the gateway, the Firestorm gateway. Um, and it was in a rush because I had to get it ready for SLB. It's mainly for SLB here. Um, but so the question is, though, would totally consider doing a video uh, basically on the active community gateways because we're not the only one. There's quite a few out there right now who are active. Some are still in development. Some are actually up and running. Um, and I think it would be great to have Linen Lab sort of promote some of those gateways. Yeah, because gateways are such great nexuses to relevant interests and things like that. That's certainly something I should remind me if I don't, but I should follow up on that with the Lindens and product who are responsible for more of that sort of thing. Because be cool. currently, yeah, the videos that I do are a reflection usually, like I said, of, of the relative priorities of how feel uh, how important we feel it's to invest my time to get the word out about yeah. something. Yeah. And some of these things, of course, as you know, it's ongoing education, like the knowledge is Absolutely. still relevant ongoing. Absolutely. It's not just a one-off announcement. So we'd certainly want to, to do that more constantly, I think, and consistently. And some, some of these things, it's like when someone is totally new, they have a very different perspective than someone who's a veteran. So it's always useful for me to think of what was it like to be lost 
the first time yeah. to think about these resources that we could educate. I mean, it is really a question of, of education, but making it memorable as well. Fun. It's so important to make this stuff fun and to not bore people. It's really, really great absolutely. to have humor in it. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that color. So I always think about what's the most effective way to, to get that in people's heads, get them talking about it to their friends such that it really means something. So yeah, thanks for bringing that up. That's a great point. I'm, I'm going to totally bug you about it again later. <laughs> great, great. Please do. <laughs> okay. I'll get off my soapbox. I was going to ask Brett, um, and I guess this is a question for Tolly too, has a destination ever come up? You know, not that you've seen yet, but you read the review of it and it's just so compelling that you drop everything and jump in right away. Well. I will tell you, this goes back a few years, and I really uh, miss it, but there's one, well, there's been a lot of locations, but one that really stands out for me that I uh, just thought was fantastic, and maybe some of the long-timers here will remember this, but you guys remember Sexton Shepherd and the <gasps> Nemo trilogy? Yes. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. So amazing. And that was a few years into our destination guide, so we'd seen lots of mm. amazing spots. But even to this day, and that's been gone like four or five years maybe mm. even now, uh, but for its time and at that era, that was just, it blew me away. In fact, Torley and I talked about it, and we did uh, something unusual. We collaborated because we were just so blown away by it on sort of a pilot test on video versions of the Destination mm -hmm. Guide. So we did sort of, even before the Drax files and all that. Which oh, that's just, cool. Yeah, which are so fantastic, of course. But we did an interview with um, Sexton. We did a, I think we did one with Kiana of uh, Mad P as a follow-up as well. They've done mm -hmm. some amazing builds uh, over yeah. the years. Yeah and on and on and we've done a few of those over the years there as mentioned earlier videos take a lot of time to do it yes. right and so it's just there's only so much time and resources we have but that was something we had a good time doing but i will tell you that that's an example of one um and i've got a lot of favorites as i'm sure everybody does there were mm. just so many amazing builds and you know the thing that's so special about some of them you know in one way of thinking about it is sometimes these spots they come and they go so quick you know mm, yeah. and you really it adds it, it, some of them by design. I mean, they're meant to be short term, like all the LEA exhibits, for example. But mm -hmm. it makes you really appreciate them while they're there. You have a sense mm -hmm. of urgency to see them where you had to be um, there. Yes. You had to document them, you know, in whatever way through photos or machinima or just through your experiences. Um, so, but yeah, that one stands out if I had to pick one. But obviously, there's tons, tons and tons. Uh, of my my first experiences with like some breathtaking places was AM radio stuff. AM radio had some amazing places. Oh, absolutely. Oh, far away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People are mentioning things now like the Baron Grayson Sims, like Relic. Oh, yeah. Uh, Virtual Harlem, 8 Bit City. Yeah. Those are good names. Mm hmm. And yeah, I know the, the fa someone misses the green is yeah. I miss the green. Oh my gosh. I, that's, that's a name I have not it's heard in a back. long time. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell who the oldies in the audience are now, all the people. Saying, yeah, that is I interestingly, yeah, as a point of reference uh, culturally, that's so fascinating because you know sometimes those experiences make such a big difference at someone's yeah. beginning of their second life. They go with friends and that just, it, it, it sears into them like a, a lovely hot iron of sorts, yeah. but it like yeah. brands them and marks them for what to expect and it really gets them excited and nostalgic now. Now we're, we're looking back at that. <laughs> so 13B, wow. I still get blown away just looking through um, uh, SL photographers flickers. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's still it, it, like I'm, I'm a photographer in real life. Um, not so much in SL. I, I find it very difficult for some reason in SL, but it, I'm blown away by some of the content that people can uh, capture in in world. Mm -hmm. Saf, yeah. I have, uh, um, we were talking a little bit of, since we're talking about in world content, I wonder if I can segue yes, into good. my question for Brett. Um, Brett, I learned something about you today. I did not know that you teach digital content creation at a university in real life. I learned that through your bio. Oh. Um, so, as we all know, Second Life has a vast array of content, uh, but not all of it is actually well-made content, right? Um, and we often see, we often see, uh, sculpt and mesh creators selling content with instructions to raise your LOD to four or eight or some ridiculous thing. Go into your debug settings and change this and that to make my content look good. And of course, advice like that has some 
pretty dire consequences on performance and stability and all kinds of various things. Um, and it's not because the content creators uh, are, are trying to like harm the users, it's because they're not properly educated on how to properly create content in the world. What's the right way to do that kind of a thing? Um, and yes, there is documentation. Uh, I just noticed totally saying documentation. I know there's documentation, but people uh, generally don't read. Um, so I, I believe the majority of these creators make these mistakes because they don't know they don't know any better. Now we offer classes for things like with the viewer. We do free classes all the time. So, and I know I, we were just talking about how busy you guys are. I know you guys are so busy. Um, but if teaching digital content creation is already sort of your thing, would you ever consider hosting classes? And as a follow-up question to that, Nix used to do a content creation, Nix Linden used to do a, a content creation user group, and but he's on Sansar now. Maybe you could consider taking over that time slot and taking over that and teaching residents how to properly create content? Well, I love the idea. I'm definitely more of a consumer than creator. My digital content creation skills for the university are not to Second Life specifically or even 3D Worlds or more to web publishing and that sort of thing. Oh. Um, so I, I don't know that I'd be the best uh, qualified for that, strangely enough. But I love the idea, though. And Maybe um, maybe you yeah. have somebody at, at the lab who could teach it. Because I think yeah. if, if content creators could learn how to do this stuff properly, SL would be a much less laggy place. I, I have an idea that I'm just coming up with right now. Um, they may not want to do it though but the moles are good oh SL yes of course designers. oh they, they really know their stuff things and they really know their stuff so maybe maybe we should have a mole school absolutely i think that's a great idea yeah that's also great yeah some of the moles of course are some of the the best content creators in second life yeah absolutely so, yeah absolutely. yeah and it'd be wonderful okay we need to push buttons on. Then. See if we Secrets, can't make something yeah. like that happen. You have a do you have an interview with Debbie coming up, Saf? You you got to yeah. corner him. Uh, okay, uh, you got to corner and him. Patch. <laughs> so oh, and Patch. Oh, you got to totally yeah. put them on the spot. Hot seat. Hot seat. Okay, sorry. You okay. guys go. So I was actually going to tell you about something else that he created, which as a machinima maker, I love. It's given us some great effects, which are the wind lights that you did, which. I'm not sure. Can you access them in the official viewer? I know you can access a whole pile of Tawley wind lights through Firestorm. Ah, so great question about that. And I'm so glad. Thank you, Jessica, for including those with the Firestorm viewer. As they are if not I bundled. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so they are not bundled as a default with the, the, the official Linda Lab viewer. No particular reason why. Although I will say that I would like the opportunity to this day to redo the whole day cycle. I think I think it, ever since what was it 2007, I know I've received a lot of complaints about that, rightfully so. Anyway, though, I have continued to make a lot of new wind lights, and a lot of them are actually drawn from the inspirational settings that some residents put on their full regions, or even parcel wind light. That's very very clever. I like mm -hmm. parcel wind light as well, and so sometimes I just tweak it a bit, and so. Oh, what was your question past that? I, I was going to say, are there any more coming? Ah, um, okay. Or... So, yeah, up to now, I have several hundred more that I haven't released to public. <laughs> and again, no particular <laughs> oh reason God. why I'm not. They're not super top secret or anything. I haven't had the chance to, to curate them. But the thing is, I think on, if you see one of my Flickr photos and you really like the wind light in that one, let me know and I can just send it over. Even though I know installation is not the easiest, you got to find that nested folder and dra drag it in. But aside from that, yeah, I continue to do that because there are so many different, the whole diversity of things from really yeah. realist, more realistic looking ones to some of these surreal places. I went to this place called whole wheat not long ago and I adore their very purple looking one it's really really cool and there's other cool place I went to recently by Lundy Lou it's called Hive it has one of the, my favorite favorite realistic it's sort of like at the crispy burnt sienna of dusk setting there and that one is one by yeah she made that one I think and it's really really great so it, it's also great you, you can, by the way, yeah, you can see those pictures on my, my Flickr. You scroll back a bit or let me know. I can paste a slur on later. But it's the sort of things where I love seeing what residents have 
done with them. And it's certainly something that I still wish was exposed better in the user interface because mm. it gets very easy to basically paint with wind lights to move, wiggle the sliders mm. around. And since wind light, which some of you, if you're not familiar, it affects everything you see just about except full bright objects because it tints it with the lighting conditions. So knowing that changing sky and water is so important to the aesthetic beauty or suitability of an experience and to this yeah i i continue to to love that so i don't know if i i'm going to repackage or well, not repackage but package these latest ones i have but it sounds like you are interested <laughs> i have to name them more sensible things because a bunch of them are, are a bunch of internal gobbledygook or things that i use for projects like specific marketing projects we did i'll name it like tr-044 or something <laughs> but and, and it makes sense to me with this internal naming system but yeah some of it i document them based on the resident creation that i may have modified off of and I do wish that this is something coming from the world of electronic music. There are some virtual synthesizers that you can see who created the sound. You can mm. see the description of what it's meant to be used like. And I wish we had that sort of credit system built into Windlight. That was a plan at one time, but it didn't pan out to be. Mm. So a lot of things are legacy, but I'm still glad it continues to be something relevant today. Definitely, definitely. Um, one of my favorites of yours is Pleasantry. And I know that I see quite a lot of orange balm because that's on the uh, that's on the um, Garden of Dreams sim where we have the Designing World yeah, Studio. Yeah, that's so great to hear. Balm there. And yeah. oh, your heavy fog saved us from <laughs> in the Black and Mirror. We had this wonderful scene where the ship, the little steamer, is sailing in heavy fog, and that was just. Just oh, using wow. Das Fog was perfect for it. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. That one I was watching and some of the other ones. So this is the backstory behind that first batch of wind lights that got included with Firestorm and that mm -hmm. you can find as a download on the Second Life Wiki is I would often just sit at a scene, a very scenic place. And that, of course, at that part, that time in the world in Second Life, the sky was a lot less diverse before wind, wind light had even made yeah. it out really. Mm -hmm beyond beta testing. And so I would sit and I would tweak things. And sometimes I would have a movie going on in the background. And so there were a bunch of them, including some of the fog ones, but there are some of them that I prefixed with the word horror because I was watching horror movies at the time or would have them playing. So you would have this, like, all this really violent and gory stuff going on in the background, but I would feel really relaxed just having it on and think about, you know, what kind of environment is this in this, this you know, Nightmare on Elm Street or something else going on? And I would try to make that into a similar wind light. And some of the names, I can't remember the stories of all of them, but some of them, they do come from, they, there are references to pop culture and to other things. And a number of the fog ones, of course, was I wanted to think about places where you cannot see so much ahead of you. And if mm. some of you are familiar with things like the Silent Hill games, that's where that sort of inspiration came from. And just thinking about how we could have that in Second Life when there's mysteries like another Sherlock Holmes, that was another kind of reference point as well. So yeah, like Das Fog, I was, I was, I was really thinking, <laughs> not of a specific movie with that one, but it was sort of like, yeah, this weird sort of even Germanic horror that was going on. I don't I don't remember the exact circumstances behind that. But but yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, Joe, yeah. Actually, you bring up a great point. Yeah, some of it was inspired by John Carpenter movies. And I'm a huge John Carpenter fan of his direction of his music. And so yeah, a bunch of them are because I watched John Carpenter. Just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Teutonic. There's another word, Joe, right? There there's another word, Teutonic. That I like that adjective as well. <laughs> Hi. Brett, I think you need to do more videos. I'd love to. I wish we had the time to do more, but they yeah. are fun. They are fun, and it's really nice. Are, to do. So, are either of you working? Oh, I hate to bring it up because it's becoming a cliche to bring up the S word oh, now. Yeah. Are there either of you? I I guess you're also doing working on sensor. I'm not asking sensor questions. Just wondering if you guys are sort of split between SL and sensor in your duties. Oh, you know, Project Sansar is, and Blocks World, and Second Life, those are the three main products now at mm -hmm. Linden Lab. So I think almost everybody in the marketing side, where Torley and I are in both in that division, almost everybody has some duties on every project. Um, I can speak for myself and say that SL is definitely my primary responsibility. Cool. Um, you know, so 
And uh, I'm happy for that. I love it. Love SL. Mm -hmm. Love the community. And, I, um, I have to say that yeah. ever since um, Abby dropped that bomb, well, actually before Abby dropped the bomb about Sansar, um, sort of surprise, um, Linden Lab have actually, you guys have accomplished so much in SL in such yeah. a short period of time. More, and maybe and on a, on, on a, uh, a smaller staff, you, you guys have accomplished more. And, um, and with Bento coming, Bento, mm -hmm. how many in the audience do not know what Bento is? Some, somebody say in local chat if you don't know what Bento is. Because I will tell you what Bento is. It is made of awesome. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> it's, it's like you'll be able to have your fingers do individual things and you'll be able to blink with one eye and you'll be able to mm -hmm. uh, do facial expressions and, and you can have raise... a proper tailbone. You can raise one eyebrow. Yeah, you, you can, can raise an eyebrow. You can, yeah, you can raise a single ironic eyebrow. You can move your fingers individually so you can sit and play the piano with, you know, your fingers working on it. It is completely awesome. You can have a half smile, a half cynical yeah, smile. That's yes, subtlety. you can pick your nose. It is. <laughs> and then, and then you can do ruder things too. <laughs> also have, have proper wings and tails. And there's a pelvic bone. <laughs> yes, and you've got all sorts of amazing things that you can do. It's just great. We did. Uh, oh yeah, Jack Jackson. Well, yeah, well actually, Jackson's totally. Link your link your You've most recent. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you're totally ahead of me. Yeah, I just pasted it. Yeah. And it's so fascinating because it addresses both mundane things that we take yeah. for advantage in the physical world, yet it also addresses really fantastical things, and that's precisely what happened in some of the marketing meetings we had about discussing what we wanted to emphasize. And I brought up that example of even wiggling your fingers independently, which of course ended up being a part of the, the featured video in that blog post I just mm -hmm. linked to. That yeah. is just so wonderful, and I really, really want to thank the pioneer creators for making such badass stuff so awesome so that i had something to show in that video. and well, so and that's yeah. that's something yeah. else i wanted to just mention right quick is that you guys have uh, and and in fact in the past year or two linen lab have been involving the community quite a bit in more things like the marketplace updates and, and whatnot but you guys are really involved and i i just want to say this so that everybody understands credit where credit is due linen lab have really involved uh, real world residents in feedback and and development and everything of bento and um, th there needs to be kudos for that there needs to yeah. be credit where credit is due it's it's oh, going to be you. great and it's because it's been a collaborative thing yeah I, and this is a trend that i've been seeing over the last couple of years because the same thing happened with the experience tools that you were bringing in in world creators. oh totally yeah i remember that and and before that materials because i remember being taken to see early stuff that was being designed by people like june dion of bear rose and i think it's fantastic i think it's it's so brilliant that over the last few years that you've brought in the residents on creative stuff like this yeah, and of course, it because we are a user content created world, it's so fundamentally important. I love to to quote the A team. I love when a plan comes together, <laughs> yes. and see, seeing both on <laughs> totally seeing on the resident side and when building that bridge with Lindens, and of course having been privy to background meetings and things like that, seeing the progress and iteration that happens each week, like with Bento, it started like sort of a pie in the sky thing from a suggestion, a proposal that Veer Linden, of course, made. Some of you may be familiar yes. with this. Yes. Yeah, and how it developed over time, getting more Lindens to, to buy in and, and be a part of this and contribute and to reach out to residents. And from my vantage point, doing this video was so, so exciting because I worked with Brett on it. And Brett, for those of you who don't, who don't know, he, with the videos, gives me so much help with the structure, with the script for it. He'll lay things out such that, because I can be like a wild dog, just going over, or cat, if you will, just going off on all these directions. <laughs> and he will help me get the help internally and lay down, write the script and figure things out such that when I'm, I, I like, of course, massage it into my more natural voice and how I colloquially speak, you know, what Torleyisms and whatnot. 
But it's such a great energy that we have, and I'm glad you have both of us here right now, just yeah, going back and forth about that and then and developing it. So sometimes we come across you know, things where it's like, oh my gosh, there's a deadline or do we have to adjust this because there's priority with another project shipping. Mm -hmm. And so Brett helps me keep all that focused so that if you're wondering how I get stuff done, I owe a lot of it to Brett basically, where I would be so distracted, you know, total ADD going in every direction here. But it's like one, one thing at a time, do it really well, really obsess and learn it with the resin, sp spend time on that, get that done and then move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So again, that interplay between the order and the chaos that I'm, I'm so used to, but I, I enjoy so much. And that energy with the residents, like going to I the bento meetings even I only attended a couple of them but it was just so wonderful seeing that towards the end of the process and having creators trust us that's a huge part of it they trust us Big with time. their early creations mm -hmm. yeah and even if they don't necessarily agree on all the ways we go about solving a problem you know sometimes there's a later stage too for follow up but nonetheless they trust us enough to say okay I want to make something cool with this and here it is, and I give you my consent to show this off in a video on behalf of what you're presenting officially with Linden Labs. So when that when that's released, we got get all so excited. You should see us all. We get so excited about a future release like that. But that behind that announcement, there are so many people that put in just so many different contributions, interlocking pieces of the puzzle, both Linden and Resident, and all those kind of sometimes late night conversations about what we're going to do next and. For that one in particular, I was I was shooting around the clock with that because of just international time zones. And I was tired, but I loved the energy with that. And it refreshed me and it got me to thinking about, OK, so this part's in. We want to feature this example. And I think it ended up being five or six different main creators that, that we showed in that video. But but totally. And just having that focus with Brett, it's it's a great ride. It's such a rush. You can. And <laughs> can I, just find it, I find it great that you guys are. Um... Yeah that it's becoming more of a collaborative thing. I tend to, Brett, you said earlier, uh, the quote unquote uh, hype years. And, and then I refer to the years after that as sort of the dark years. And, and I like to refer to our current sort of the last two years and, and maybe going forward as kind of like the, the collaborative years, you know, the, the enlightened years. I'm, I'm really excited about SL. I think right now is a great time to be excited about SL. Maybe yeah. after the Dark Ages, we've moved to the Renaissance. Yes, yeah, the <laughs> Renaissance, exactly. But the, like the cliched saying, saying, though, you have to have the darkness to appreciate the light and those yes, contrasts. Yes, and, I suppose, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, and you know, for all these newbies that are complaining about how things are, it's like, we're all whippersnapper back in my day. <laughs> well, even think back to even before a time when I was around and people used to tell me about, oh, you know, it cost, what was it, 10 linens to res each prim, your prim allocation was so limited and and oh you did not have point to point teleport wow yes. and you had to have oh, was a telehubs we, yeah we used to have to pay to teleport God, back exactly back. exactly <laughs> yeah and then so yeah when when telehub land right land right behind by a by a telehub was so so expensive because of that mm -hmm. proximity that you would hope to barrage someone in a bunch of ad billboards and things to get them like a catcher's net of sort to get them to go to your store yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ratings. There's another one. Profile ratings. Who remembers those? Right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Getting your yeah. first neg rating. Oh too. yeah, I remember those. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Feeling all butt hurt. <laughs> oh my, oh my gosh. Just... Let me tell a brief story too of before I was a Linden, and I was I didn't understand the implications of it, but they would have rating parties. So a bunch of people would gather oh, at yeah. a club or something and start rating each other. And sometimes there were a rare occasion when a Linden liaison would drop in and know what we were up to. <laughs> And we all would teleport for the hills. <laughs> We're like, oh my gosh, did they, did they see me you know, giving this all to everyone? It's the fuzz. <laughs> and it, it was, yeah, I mean, that was a huge part of my first impression here was, yeah, coming up, like, like hearing from people, are Lyndons like like Santa Claus or or do they really exist? And I was in the welcome area and one would drop down sort of floating like an angel and with, with their different avatars. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, everyone behave. And it was especially, well, it's more amusing in hindsight, but at the time when some of these really mean, nasty griefer jerks would grief everyone and then a Linden would come, you know, and, and they used the freeze powers yeah. and they were just <laughs> immobilized and kind of, they couldn't do anything. And then finally expel them and everyone had had a sigh of relief and and yeah that was really the template of a positivity that made me well it made me yes certainly want to want to apply to linda lab because i was thinking wow you can make a positive change in affecting the world that way absolutely absolutely so, 
yeah, I could go on and on. <laughs> just ramble on about that. I think I think people do miss the old town hall days we when do. there was the oh, level yeah, yeah, yeah. of connectivity um, with the Lindens. But obviously it's now so huge that it's very difficult to do something like that. Yeah, it's tough. There's always a scaling issue, but that's part of why we've we've done things, as you know, like lab chat, because mm. we still want to be personal about things like that. And of course, right here, Meet the Lindens, this is a great yes. example. So I think even though some things are old, they, they still have a lot of value by way of communication mm. and even human communication. Well, okay, you may be a furry or however you choose to represent us, yourself in second life. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I yeah. love seeing all that. Mm. And that's the same reason why I enjoy just teleporting into a random club and saying hi to everyone or just hanging out somewhere in the middle. One of my most favorite things has always been uh, what I call sim surfing, where I just open up the map. Yeah. And I, I just randomly click someplace and teleport and look around. Sometimes I'll look for groups of people or sometimes oh, I will yeah. like inevitably I end up at yeah. <laughs> yeah, I end up at like yeah. Violet or something, which is horrible. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like I gotta give you have you seen that random teleporter backpack? It sounds like I gotta give you one of those. Wait, what? It is, so cool. it is a gadget. I was not aware of it. I think it's been out for a while, but I only heard about it recently and when you click on it, it'll just teleport you to a random place using no I think kidding. Tyke, Tyke, Tyke Shepherd's yeah, uh, her grid survey database. And sometimes you, of course, end up with places you're banned from. But if you keep clicking, sometimes you end up with really, really neat places. And oh, you got to send me that. Up, Yeah, Kenyard, she's been blogging about her adventures using it after I sent her one. So, Oh, uh, but does it have, like, an, an adult, like, a, I don't yeah, want to yeah. look at some of yeah. those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will ask you for that preference. Like virgin eyes and ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can set it to only G slash M. So oh, you don't great. have to go to, you know, Zindra Strip Club X you know, that, or, or who knows, or worse, right? Or not seeing that, you know, but, but yeah. <laughs> it sounds good. I'm are afraid we, out of time? Yeah, we we're out of... are out of time. Yeah, we've got we got started late. That's sad. In. It's sad because we started late, but um, I'm afraid there's someone else after us, so we are going to have to wrap this up. Guys, it has been brilliant talking to you. And do you think there's any way I could probably persuade you into doing a lab chat special? I'm down do for think? that. If we're all cool at the lab, if Pete gives the okay. Yeah, I'm I'm right on with that. Sure would you, thing. Brett? Would you be up for that if if we can sort it out with the lab? Yep, clear it with Pete, and we'll be there. Fantastic. Would the audience like that? Oh to come have on, that's a pretty dumb these question. sessions. <laughs> yeah, I love a sense of continuity. It is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great one. Okay. Well, it seems we're getting very positive feedback. Oh yeah, we got to do a mole chat, Saf. We got to do a mole chat. You got to find a way to get the moles. You got to get the moles. The moles are incredibly Ooh, shy yeah. creatures, and um, we got to find a way. They they very reluctant to talk. I've I've tried this for designing worlds. They kind of hide and pop out when we're least expecting them. Hmm. Or at least to some of the, some like uh, Michael Linden and some of the others. Yeah, Michael. With, with the LDP, Michael. Yeah, we would shine a light because some of this mole content that's coming out and some of the stuff that is in the works is really, really cool. And yeah, oh, yeah. it would be great timing. It would be fantastic timing with that, with the launches of some of these things coming out. Hmm. Okay, because yeah, uh, we've got Patch talking on Friday, so oh yeah, oh, I yeah, want to, I want to yeah. be there for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, well, <laughs> I'm going to say thank you so much to my guests today, Brett Linden and Torley Linden, and my co-host, Jessica Lyon, for joining us. This has been a fantastic um, talk, and I, we've really enjoyed it. We need to do more. <laughs> and um, thank you, everyone, for coming and sticking with us, because, yeah, it's been fairly hectic with crashes and so forth but the tomorrow's talk is going to be Ebby Linden and then on um, Wednesday we have Oz and Landon Linden Pete and Ziola on Thursday and Patch and Dee on Friday what we a have week. another talk later on we've got artists from the Linden Endowment for the Arts will be coming and talking at 5 o'clock and immediately following us, we have 
a live reading of HP Lovecraft by Understanding Complexity, so do stick around for that. It will be great. Thank you, everyone, and uh, we're going away now. <laughs>